Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, January 3. The wage impasse between the government and rank-and-file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force will be the topic of cabinet deliberation when it meets on Monday, January 8. The police have rejected a 6% increase in wages, which would be spread over two years. They have also sought the Prime Minister's intervention in the stalled negotiations with the Ministry of Finance. In a letter addressed to the Jamaica Police Federation Tuesday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said discussions on the issue had been ongoing with the Ministers of Finance and National Security. Mr. Holness said the matter, however, required a much broader discussion with the Cabinet due to the far-reaching implications of the issues to be discussed. While highlighting the police's integral role in providing security as a precursor for economic growth, the Prime Minister also pointed to the delicate state and stage of the island's economic recovery. He said present action would determine if the country stayed on the course of recovery, adding that it was in all parties' collective interest to ensure that recovery was maintained. National Security Minister Robert Montague has rejected the Jamaica Constabulary Force's initial report into the New Year's Day traffic pileup along the Palisados Main Road and given them until January 5 to resubmit a more comprehensive account. The Palisados Road leads to the Norman Manley International Airport and the traffic congestion resulted in major flight delays and passengers missing flights. In response, Minister Montague called on Police Commissioner George Coelho to account for the conditions surrounding the issuing of the permit, policing plan for the event, and the steps that will be taken to hold someone accountable. But, he says, the report delivered today was inadequate and did not address his questions or clearly speak to a policing plan for the event. While insisting that someone must be held responsible, the security minister acknowledged that based on reports from the public, police personnel on the ground display the utmost professionalism and courtesy and cannot be held solely responsible. And in response to the traffic gridlock, the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, the KSAMC, has suspended amusement licenses for events along the Palisados Main Road. In a statement Tuesday, Kingston's Mayor Delroy Williams said the suspension of permits was a short-term decision. Meetings will be held with ministries and agencies to determine a medium to long-term position. The KSAMC says the traffic buildup was due to a breakdown in enforcement, pointing out that the corporation's permit for a party to be held along the roadway was issued under strict instructions. The municipal corporation says two inspections were carried out at the venue, following which it was agreed that provisions were to be made for parking at the venue and that at no time should the main road be used for parking. The corporation says that at the time of the issuing of the permit, which was also approved by the police, it was satisfied that adequate parking arrangements were made between the airport and the promoter. The corporation has apologized for the tremendous inconvenience caused to visitors, airlines and airport personnel, and residents of Kingston and St. Andrew. In other news, persons served by the Southeast Regional Health Authority are now better able to access emergency care. This as two buses were retrofitted and customized into ambulances and turned over to the Princess Margaret Hospital and the Kingston and St. Andrew Health Services today. The ambulances, worth $15.8 million, are part of a drive to improve the authority's ambulance fleet and healthcare delivery. Currently, we have a fleet of 16 ambulances. Eight, of course, is in the shop for major repairs. For this year, we will be purchasing another three ambulances. It's a perfect way to start 2018 because um, in the past, we have had challenges between our health facilities and our hospital in moving patients back and forth and also you know just to do the normal work of the hospital so we are very very happy about this and finally education minister senator ruel reed has hailed the late ian boyne as a patriotic jamaican who will be missed by all minister reed is among the latest group of persons to sign the condolence book for mr boyne that's been mounted at the jamaica information service in an interview with JIS News following Tuesday's signing, Minister Reed remembered Boyne as a very bright, intelligent, deep thinker with whom he often had profound conversations. He was a very um, affable person, um, very kind, a uh, very humane person, and we had a very good conversation. Um, we spoke about the issues of Jamaica's morality and or 
of our social capital. And he was very passionate about uplifting Jamaica, making Jamaica a prosperous country where peace and love and order and discipline and good moral um, you know, standards would be upheld. Mr. Boyne died at age 60 on December 18 following a period of illness. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.